looking to make an email signature for free today i'll show you how to do that but first if you're new here my name is michelle and i love to talk about websites design and freelancing so if you find this information helpful please be sure to give the video a like and if you want to see more tutorials from me be sure to subscribe to my channel I will say that this video is more of a response to the create a signature in Gmail video that I did a while back. Uh, it seems that that solution may not actually be working anymore. Uh, so I wanted to present you with an alternative solution. We will be interacting slightly with HTML, but I promise you can handle it, you are capable, and plus you can show off to your friends and you can just tell them that some blonde chick on the internet taught you how to do this. Before we get started, I will say that MySignature.io, which is the platform that I'm going to be showing today, they are not a sponsor and probably never will be if they ever catch wind of this video. So without further ado, let's dive in. To build our email signature today, we are going to use a service called MySignature.io. Currently on that website, you can see that it is a free email signature generator to boost your personal brand. Now, while it is free... Uh, there are limitations, and I don't love limitations, so I'm going to show you how to make it really free, uh, which I can't imagine that they're going to love. But <laughs> if you really want to have a free signature created for you with minimal exposure to HTML, this could be a solution for you. I know that some of my other videos with the Gmail signature creator by doing it in a GDoc that might work for some people. It seems to be not working for quite a few because copying and pasting it into the Gmail field doesn't seem to work. It, you often get a message saying that your signature is too long and so it won't let you paste it in, um, which is kind of a bummer. So I'm trying to offer another solution out there. Now, they do have an option to just pay for it. By all means, if you want to pay for this service, please do so. Uh, I'm just trying to show the folks out there on a budget how to get something that looks decent without having to shell out money every month. So hopefully this will be an option for you. So the first thing that we're going to do when we get to the website, uh, you can't just create an account, but I really want to make sure that you do create an account because I think it affects the way that the images are linked, um, just through experimentation, I've, I've learned some things. So the first thing that you have to do though, is just create the signature. So it's going to offer you several templates. So whether you want your photo in there, what kind of social media links that you want, the layout, um, colors, if you want to have banners on, on the bottom. So there's a lot of different options here. So I'm just going to try and pick something that is somewhat interesting, but relatively simple. Let's, let's just go with this guy here. So as it walks you through you're gonna be able to put in your name, put in your details. However, you'll get to the spot where you're at to design it and you can change any of this. So this isn't set in stone, but this is just trying to get it generated enough. So I'm going to insert my name, I'll hit next. And then I get to choose an industry. I'm gonna say marketing and sales. What's my position? I'm just gonna go with designer. And then I'll pop in my website. I'll hit next. And then just wants to know, how do you plan on using the solution? I'm just gonna say myself and hit next. I get to choose three social networks. So I'm gonna do Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Hit next. And then I can select the email client I use. Now, if you are going to just use the free version the way that they have it structured, or if you plan on paying for it, this might be a little more important to add. I'm just going to choose Gmail. I do use Gmail, but by the end of this tutorial, you'll see that this isn't actually going to matter. So I'll hit get started. And so now I've got fields on the left hand side that I can fill out and I've got a preview of what everything looks like. It does say that I'm using pro features. So anytime you see something that says pro, just know that that is a feature that they would make you pay for. So 
not everything is as free as advertised. So let's just fill out some details. I probably won't use all of the fields. Like I don't want the company in there. I don't need that. I can just have myself um, with the position as designer. I don't need to put a department in. I don't think that makes sense for me. Um, I'm just going to leave that fake phone number in, although we'll just change it to a phone number that's st structured more like the ones in America. I'll add in my email address and then my website's already in there. And then I can see that there's a custom field that was put in and that one just correlates to listen to my podcast about health. I don't think I need an extra line there, so I'm just going to exit out of that. So if you do want to add a field, you can, but know that that's where that pro feature is probably coming from um, when it's saying up top that I'm using pro features. So this tab looks good. I can move on to images. And if I wanna switch out the image, I can go find an image of myself that I can pop in. So I'll do that now. So I'm using a circular image that I uploaded. You actually have the ability to crop it and make it a circle with that little editor if you want. Um, but I already have the, the circle version created, so no need for me to do that. I'll move on to the social tab. And then this is where I can add in my social links. So I'm gonna take a quick second to do that. Okay, so I've got my social links included in there. So that should be good. Um, they do have a gallery of all kinds of icons if you want to search for them. Just know that you can add more than just the three social links, but if you get to a certain point or like for example, this LinkedIn one, that is a pro feature. So again, they're making you pay for some of those features. So I'm happy with the social tab right now. These little guys down here, the YouTube and Patreon, I probably don't need those. Um, if I click on them, those add-ons, I can probably take those away. So I'm just going to click those out and then just makes my Signature, just a lot more simple. So those are in the add-ons section. They have different well, other available add-ons if you want to add things like a, a call to action or, you know, event calendar, any kind of thing like that. You can definitely add more to it. Um, but right now I'm just trying to keep things a little simple. So let's go to the design tab. This is where we can change the font if we want to. Just know that you're gonna be limited to just the basic kind of computer fonts that most computers have installed. You can't go super crazy with the font. So Arial for me is absolutely fine. You can change the font size if you so desire. You can change some of the colors like the icon background. So if I wanted to make this, I don't know, let's just do like a hot pink. I can do that and we can see that that updated over there. So easy way to do that. They've got some additional layouts that you could probably cycle through if you wanted to change that up. And then they've got the branding line. So if you do use something that is a little bit more customized, this is actually a pro feature. So if I hit remove on that, then we can see that that has been removed there. So if I'm ready to use this, I want to make sure that I do have an account set up so that I can come back to this if I need to and make edits. Although I, I definitely don't want to use the pro and I'm not quite sure what is being considered the pro feature at this point because that's what's making me choose here. So as you can see, just if you wanna get a peek at their pricing, this is like $12 a month. To me, that feels a little expensive <laughs> for just an email signature. So if you have you know a need to, to have a really nice design to email signature and you want all those features, then absolutely pay for it. But again, girl on a budget, so. That's probably not gonna happen for me. I would love to go back to free. Your pro features in some parts of the signature will be removed. So I'm gonna say back to free. And I think 
it must be that bottom bar because they added it back. So that must have been what it was. Or the circle, the circle thing. That's that's probably it. Apparently, circles cost money. Uh, which, again, doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm fine with squares, though. I can deal with squares. So I want to save my signature. I think this is just an important step. So save your signature, create an account. And so it's going to walk you through that. I will allow you to take a moment to fill out those details. Okay, so I am now in an account and I can see my signature preview and it's time to utilize this so that I can install. Now, again, please, if you're going to use this, you they have installation features. Just know that what you see at that point in time, even with this little remove the branding at the bottom, that is what's going to show up if you use their method. But I'm going to show you a method where we're going to go into CodePen, we're going to drop the HTML, and then we're going to edit it slightly so that we can just copy and paste it into our Gmail account. Um, this is cheating. I understand. I know this is probably not the best method to teach everybody, but I just want to show you what's possible. So how do I do this? I'm going to hover over, let's say my name. I'm going to hit a right click. This could also be a control click. Uh, if you are on a PC, um, I would think that most of your browsers do this. I'm in Chrome, so if you have Chrome, this will definitely work. I think it works in Firefox as well, for sure. Uh, we're just going into inspect mode. So I'm going to right click my name and then I'm going to hit inspect. And that's going to pop up this window. And this dev tools window here I'm gonna start hovering over and I'm looking for the div. Specifically, you can see this one that says signature preview. I can just hover over the table, actually. The table is really all that I want. So I'm gonna hit edit as HTML. I right clicked again on that. Hit edit HTML and then I'm just going to select it all and copy it all. So I'm on a Mac, Command A will select it all, Command C will copy it all. And so now I've got this portion of my signature copied. Gonna go into the window that I have for CodePen and I've got this open. I minimize the CSS and the, and the JavaScript because I'm not really gonna touch those. And I'm just going to paste in this code. So you can see there it is, not a ton of HTML. So this should definitely work in Gmail. I'm gonna hit this little drop down and hit format HTML so that it's a little tidier. Um, so we can start to see things, you know, our the width of this table is 500 pixels wide. It's got a font size set. So we can make those adjustments if you're comfortable with HTML. Again, you don't really have to know a lot about HTML to kind of change the things that we are. So with code pin, the white text is what's actually showing up. One of the things that I think would be nice for this signature, which I don't know that I had the option of, I'd love for my name to be bold. So I can see in this cell, we've got a style and they've already got some styles there. They've got, um, that's the color. So if you wanted to drop in a hex color, you could do that. Right before the quotation and after that uh, semicolon, I'm gonna put font dash weight and I'm gonna say bold and then I'll put my uh, semicolon there and that's gonna bold my name. So you can take what it gives you and you can add just a tiny bit more flair. So, or if I decide that I hate that pink color, I could change that too. Or if I need to switch out my email address, something of that nature we can see where we can edit those details. That's a fake phone number. So if I wanted to actually use this and put my real phone number in there, I could do that. Uh, this is just that table that we copied. So I really don't have to worry about deleting that banner that says create your own signature. And then I can just double check my links too, my social links. Th this, is, this is something I do wanna bring up. If you don't, create that account and you don't save it into like a dashboard, your your HTML links will actually be there. But once it becomes saved, they actually change the links. So it's just something to keep in mind. Right now we've got the images that are generated from them. So those social media icons, that's what this 
PNG file is. And then I've got a link that's kind of masked to what it's auto-generated. This would be the thing that I would say just pay attention to for if whatever reason you needed to make sure that these were going to the right place, I would change these. So for example, I can I know that I've got Instagram, I've got YouTube and TikTok. So if I'm not sure, I'm I'm assuming that they're going in cascading order, but this one in the very corner, the bottom left of my screen, I can see that it's BG6. So it's this top one here. If I wanted to, I could take this. I'm going to copy and paste the actual link that that's going to is going to be my Instagram. And just like the third one is going to be my TikTok. And the second one here is going to be my YouTube. So I could also change the alt text to make my life easier in the future. And I know that that's YouTube. And I could do the same up here. That's Instagram. And the last one down here is TikTok. Again, you don't need to do this step, but for future reference, if you're playing with the code in the future, this might this might be helpful to just make sure that, you know, things are going to the right place and understand that because we created the account, that is why it is generating these image files. So you don't have to worry about hosting your images somewhere. I think in some of the other tutorials that I've done in the past, you have to have your images live somewhere on the internet in order to put them in a signature. So this is kind of a nice hosting method. Again, that requires the account. My experiences in utilizing or copying the signature before I saved it into account, it creates an incredibly long string of code, I guess you would say, uh, to the point when I went to go paste it into Gmail, it said that my signature was too long because there was too much code. So saving it kind of condenses that. So at least that's why I think it's important to have an account. Um, I could be wrong, but this is just what I am relaying to you from my experience. So I'm gonna hit save. So I've got this account. Again, CodePen's free too. So CodePen.io, you can create an account and then you can have, you know, different pins for yourself that you can save and come back to. I'm going to copy my signature and then this is the moment of truth. I'm going to pop into my Gmail account. I'm in my settings. So if you are not familiar where this is, it's just the general tab and you scroll a bit and you go into the signature spot and you hit create new. So I'm going to call this one my signature.io. We'll hit create and then I'm going to paste and then hit the save button. And thank goodness, I do believe it worked. So if I click on, we'll just say, I'll get rid of that message. If I click on insert my signature.io, there is my beautiful signature and it didn't take too much work, hopefully, to achieve that. So I hope this is a solution that can work for you. Hopefully you find it helpful and easy. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments. I will do my best to help out. And as always, I will see you in the next video.